This is Kevin Mitt with the Fat Show, where it's football all the time. Today we have a couple guests with us. We're here on the 7 to 7 Association Tournament. Really quite a great tournament we got to see with a lot of different teams coming from Seattle, um, Spokane, and from Portland, uh, just to name a few. But we have a couple of uh, players here, not players, but really ones that have really brought this organization, been a part of this organization. Uh, let's just first of all start with Dominic Rothy. Dominic, uh, tell me a little bit about what this means for you as far as being a part of an organization like this. Well, it's really about just giving back to the next wave of kids that are working hard for the same dreams I had that Taylor had when we were growing up here and just giving them more opportunities than we had. Back now, I mean, it was all high school 7-on-7 seven seven. in the summer and now they got a full season and run around five months and getting better. So they're going to break every record we set five years ago, just keep getting better every year and so more of us just get put on more and more. Now it could be said, Dominic, a little bit about talent. You know, we, uh, we see talent, there's, there's the SEC conference and the there's that Midwest area. There's the, the little nook and cranny of the Pacific Northwest uh, that a lot of people talk about. Has the level of play improved every year that you've seen? Oh, definitely. It's because more time is being put into it because of stuff like this. And the last three years, it's grown. Good. I didn't have anything like this in high school. Really. To go back to 2013, that's how decent it was. So, I mean, now these guys are playing twice as many games as they play in the fall. You can't get better if you're not playing. So, I mean, that's all it's about for us. And, and it's almost like this too, you know, the, the, the stakes grow every yep. year because people are talking about it. Uh, they're saying, are you a part of this organization? Are you part of being uh, uh, competing in it? Isn't that true? A lot of people talk about that as it grows every year. Yeah, it's getting better, bigger because people will feel left out. If they're not playing, they're not in this tournament, they're seeing it on Twitter, social media changes that for us. And I mean, now everyone wants to come out, more teams, and it's like, all right, now we got to find more fields. And we had to change this location to get another field because that exact reason. And people talk about also too the different states and you talk about california you talk about the midwest ohio you talk about even on the east coast sometimes even new york well even in alabama you know you look at here is that really when you look at the competition the competition itself you're seeing different players aren't you every year oh yeah definitely i mean the underclassmen come up and you see them get bigger and better every year and then they end up being pac-12 sec guys and we only have maybe one or two guys a year I mean, in my classes coming up. So now, I mean, I'm seeing freshmen, 2020, 2021 kids getting Florida State offers, and I'm just like, wow. I wish we would have had that back then, but I'm just happy it's still in the Northwest and we're part of just helping everyone get better. And really, what has this meant for the state of Washington? I mean, because we are here in Vancouver, McKenzie Stadium. Uh, what is what has this meant for Washington State? And especially for Vancouver, it's just that exposure. Everyone kind of forgets about it because it's so close to Portland. And I mean, we got two great programs in the area, Union and Cam is dominating Skyview and the, I mean I played these teams in high school and I got whooped a little bit so I mean I know how it is so moving down here being able to train these kids it's just fun and can't wait to keep going and I mean just the beginning we're two months into it we still got three months and then the summer to prepare for the fall. Well we know we're going to hear a little bit about more, you more in the future Dominic Rothy especially getting to know you a little bit more here in the Fat Show Football the time we do look to peel the barriers as it, as it were to kind of yep. like find out a little bit more about the person so we look forward to you on, a, on, a, on another interview at some point. Appreciate it. All look right. forward to it too. All right here we got uh, Taylor Barton with us. Taylor thank you so much for being on the Yo. Fat Show Football the time. Uh, tell me what is as a organizer of this event, what this has meant for you as a person and even a past player, but uh, seeing really the talent that you're seeing here today in the state of Washington and somewhat Portland, tell me what this has meant for you. Well, it's a really fun thing. I mean, it was seven on seven. It's just been incredible to watch it grow. And now to be on the front lines, of, you know, I kind of got away from seven on seven a couple of years ago. I didn't like the direction I was heading and we felt like, hey, why not step in and organize something that everyone throughout the Northwest has all these programs are grown. You see FSP, you see Air, you see Lily, you see e you see Air One, you see these programs, and as they have more and more teams, they need tournaments to play. And in the past, the only tournaments you could go play in was you know, fly to California, to Las Vegas, or you'd have to fly across the country to Florida. So we're coming in offering opportunities now all throughout the Northwest, where you get that AAU travel feel without that AAU travel cost, because you're able to just drive to places, maybe stay in a hotel the night before. And what it does is, give tournaments for all those teams, but also local teams, high school teams or just local select teams that maybe aren't those powerhouse brands. They're able to come here, compete against those teams. And you saw today, there were some big name brands and then you see Tacoma and that end up winning the tournament. So the fun thing is, it's just like March Madness watching Loyola, anybody can win once you get into the rounds. And that's what's fun. At our tournaments, literally a new team has won every year. You know, and the thing is too, is uh, you, you look at here, uh, as far as that goes, 
every year, and as I mentioned to Dominic about it, every year seems to be just another notch up from what it was before. Isn't that the case? For sure, for sure is. You see the talent of the teams, you see the talent of the individuals on the team. And I think it's just more the organizational structure. You see programs putting something in place where, I mean, there's a seven on sevens in the off season, but there are now off season training programs for the off season training programs. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to see how it's grown. And people that didn't know AAU basketball 50, 60 years ago, and then you watch the explosion of it. That's what you're seeing in seven on. You're, you're seeing not just at high school, but middle school youth. We do down to fifth, sixth grade tournaments, and we have people requesting, hey, do you do third and fourth grade? So it's just really crazy. But, but you think about it, once kids have been doing this from third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, think how much better they're getting. Because now they're playing an entire football season. Then in the off season, now, well, they used to be just hanging out on the couch or playing another sport. Now they're playing another sport and still working on football. That's the big thing. We're not telling kids, just do seven on seven and quit other sports. We're telling them, hey, do these other sports, but don't put a football down for six months and then come in two weeks before season and now start trying to train. That's where kids in the Northwest were behind kids in California and Texas and Florida, and they're catching up. You know, and we can't really figure, forget to the parents as well that actually bring these kids here. You try to make these events as kind of in, in a, a logistical piece here, trying to bring it together to where you can make, the, make sure that these kids, because obviously they got to get rides to get here, right? Yep. Well, I mean, the parents have to commit the resources, the time. The I'm a parent yeah. myself, so I understand. And that's why the organization of 7 on is getting better to make it better for parents where we're able to get a schedule to them in November and December saying, hey, January through May, here's practice schedule, here's game schedule. So then parents can schedule it out with other sports, with other kids. But the parents are incredible. They come out here and you see they're fanatical. I mean, you talk about, I've played in front of 100,000 people. Sometimes it seems like it's louder playing in front of 107 on seven parents. And, and they are definitely a lot crazier than some college kids. Too. So tell me both, this is some of the question that both of you, both Dominic and Taylor can uh, answer. You know, we hear the Fat Show Football all the time, we talk about really the athlete as it's on the field. But also too, there's an athlete off the field that plays a big part to not only their, their school, uh, college or to their team, even uh, FSP or even to the associations of seven on seven teams. Tell me what it means for a player off the field what contribution, how important is that contribution from that player uh, rather than on, on the field but off the field as a student? It's huge. I mean, most of the time parents won't let kids play if they don't have a good GPA. We lose kids because, hey, math class, they failed it, got to pull the kids out. So it's just that extra incentive, especially in the off season. I mean, I've had some parents, they say, hey, I was a great kid in football season, and as soon as that happened, I didn't care about school. So if football season is nine months, they care about school for nine months, and that just gets the grades better. And, gets more schools looking at you. And then, I mean, you work hard in the classroom, you're gonna work on the field, that's what you're working for. And then, I mean, all the time they're putting into it, they just show that commitment that it doesn't matter if it's football, they're gonna learn football doesn't last forever. You need to know how to work hard and use that time wisely. Nicely said, you too, Taylor. Tell me about it, you know, as far as the student on and off the field, but you know, off the field, how important does that play a part in this? I think the, the student part of it is important, but the camaraderie part of this too. You know, you, you look at it and we always emphasize GPA. Every coach will emphasize that and, and that is a big part of it. Uh, but in, in this, when you talk about the cool thing of seven on seven, when you talk about a tournament in Vancouver, when teams are coming from Canada and Spokane and down in Corvallis, Oregon, they're coming up here and they stay in a hotel and the kids are traveling in the car together. When you go to a tournament in Las Vegas, they're flying together. They're, they're, so the, the bonding that happens, and you see personalities come out where you didn't see that before because you only saw a kid at practice or in games. So you couldn't really tell what kind of kid he was, what kind of leader he was. So it's fun to watch kids grow and you see them get around each other and you see kids' personalities start to come out more and that's something we as coaching staff and association talk a lot about, have talked a lot about is it's fun to see kids that didn't really know who they were when you talked about Dion Lair's back, that then you start seeing over the course of a weekend who they really are and you go, man, I really like this kid. Or, hey, this kid is a little bit different, but hey, you know, when we talk to college coaches, we have to give them an honest assessment. College coaches, they can watch huddle highlights. They can see if a kid's talented. What they want to know is how coachable is he? What kind of leader is he? What's he like with a, a, a group? And this gives us an opportunity and all the programs that give us an opportunity to really give a good assessment. 
Well, great. We really appreciate the coaches here being a part for the Fat Show Football Time, being a part of this uh, association today and, and covering some of the highlights of this. Uh, we thank you very much uh, again, Dominic, for your time. Thank you. And we appreciate it too, uh, Taylor. Thank you for your time and what you're doing. Thank you for what you guys do. Huge fan. You guys do an awesome thing. And it's, it's proud to be a Northwest guy and see what you guys are doing here. It's pretty cool. Well, we thank you very much. And this has been the Fat Show Football Time. I'm Kevin signing off. Thank you.